What's going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new post commentary duel video. I know it's been a couple weeks in the last one, but uh, we've got a pretty awesome Danger Orcus versus Danger Thunder Guard Dragon matchup here for you guys today. And also before we get into this any further, don't forget to check out Imperium Duelist if you're interested in this beautiful playmat. We are using the uh, Dragon Scale playmat. You can pick it up down on their website, check them out in the description below, and use that code to get 10% off on uh, your future purchases like sleeves, playmats, dice, anything of that that nature so yeah don't forget to check them out appreciate the support as always guys but we'll go ahead and get right into the duel here obviously um a very dice roll dependent game i would say uh both decks really do want to go first here um and luckily i win the dice roll so i can uh, have a shot at least setting up long gear suit bomber dragon which i think is a just an insanely strong field um and as you see, I normal summon that 4 mud skipper after resolving basically the uh, destiny draw for the deck, the uh, orchestrated return. And then 4 mud skipper uh, reveals itself to be or uh, the nightmare Cerberus that will link me right into mermaid. And then I'm discarding jackalope off of mermaid uh, to go ahead and summon the orcus nightmare from the deck and go ahead and summon the uh, danger dogman. Of course, I play dogman in my build because... I'm too poor to afford Nessies or uh, Suchinokos, so that's why I'm playing cards like Dogman, simply because they're not nearly as expensive as other cards. So you see me here linking into Galatea with Nightmare and Mermaid, and then using Mermaid's effect uh, to send uh, Harpoor, and then before I forget, uh, because I believe I end up forgetting in a couple of these matches that happen later on in the stream, uh, to use that Galatea effect to shuffle back in one Vanish Machine to go ahead and set an Orca Spell or Trap from deck. And I quickly grab the Field Spell there. Now, the one thing that I do mess up here, which is something I still need to get better with going forward, is my zone placement with Dangers, uh, or Danger Orcus, I should say. Orcus in general, especially for the Summon Sorcerers play with Long Gear Sue and stuff. You need to have those, uh, basically, the two zones that Summon Sorcerers would point to, whether she's in the left extra mod zone or the right. Mainly the right, because that's how you're going to usually set up the combo. I do it here in the left zone. Own. doesn't matter too much so I do have to move the um, the dogman over that is something obviously I wouldn't be able to do in a tournament but uh, this is a match for testing purposes and I realized that uh, I got to get better at that and uh, that's what these types of matches are for for practicing getting better learning from those, uh, those small mistakes especially uh, they, they might seem small my mute just like you know moving it over one zone but in reality they just play such a huge role just small little things like that that can help you play that much better um, so the dog man actually going to come in a bit clutch here if I were to just link for the bomber dragon if I had no other extenders but I do have another extender uh, which is using the uh, world wind which will revive the uh, symbol skeleton which is important because I want symbol skeleton engraved to be able to use during my opponent's turn and then right here is a super spicy tech that I'm playing which is the umber mirage the elemental lord uh, basically moon glacia for dark monsters when it's summoned while well, you have fi exactly five darks in your grave you can add one monster from your deck with 1500 or less attack and then the other restrictions apply if it leaves the field you lose your next battle phase things of that nature but basically it's pre errata sangan and it was something that I'm testing out in my build and I've resolved it a couple times now and it works to great effect literally add any monster in your deck with 15 or less attack armageddon knight malacious any hand traps which i'm not playing in this build right now because i am playing dangers but i can search jackalope scrap recycler armageddon knight like uh some of the um i can search orcus nightmare i can search worldwide which i actually do believe i end up searching here because i have like a graffer play in hand or something along the lines of that um so like it's just such a really nice card um, and I, I might actually consider playing a level 8 danger in the future um, because there could be a possible rank 8 follow up here um, you know to to secure that I don't lose my next battle phase so um, yeah unfortunately like the dogman does get summoned out like it's something I, I didn't have to use I didn't have to discard the jackalope off the mermaid I honestly could have just discarded something else but that was just my decision I'm still kind of getting used to how uh, the deck should play because I feel like Orcus is like a, a, a a somewhat difficult deck to play uh, for the most part because it does uh, require you know pretty decent resource management and things of that nature uh, at least in my opinion so we get started with battery man solar and sends the bestial thunder dragon discarding avian and avian will summon the bestial thunder dragon and that will trigger the effect of battery man solar to summon a token the mandatory effect of battery man solar now I'm going to use bomber or the uh, symbol skeleton here to summon out Galatea 
and then chain Galatea's effect to the Bomber Dragon so I can shuffle back in that World Wand and go ahead and set uh, basically another destiny draw in quotes if you will to my field the orchestrated return give me some free draws next turn and i was actually able to set up that draw spell with the effect of umbra mirage adding me that world one uh, from deck to hand so that'd be a nice uh, free discard of course like i lose the umbra mirage here um but really it's uh not too big of a deal to lose my next battle phase since i'm in such a controlling position at this point uh, I can shuffle anything he has in his and that any link monster points to uh, back to the grave so he summons the Colossus there that does trigger the effect of bomber dragon he will banish battery man solar for that effect to protect it otherwise it would just simply get removed from the field by the effect of bomber dragon of course long gear so as we know is sticking to the field because it cannot be destroyed by card effects while he is linked gonna go ahead and grab thunder dragon duo and special summon thunder dragon duo by banishing a dark it looks like thunder dragon dark and the thunder dragon avian um, and i'm going to chain on the summon of that the effect of orcus nightmare to foolish uh, any dark machine from my deck to the grave i'm going to send the uh, harp horror to target the long gear suit to boost that up by 400 attacks so you can't run it over with colossus at this point um, so it's at 2,900, and I don't think you can run over with Duo, actually Duo might be 3k, uh, I'm not really sure of his, uh, his exact attack points, I'm not too familiar with Thunder Dragon's, uh, you know, stats overall. Uh, but at this point I do have another option to essentially wipe the field, though he's opting to summon another Colossus. Now, he does summon in the zone Link Monster points too, so... The Bomber Dragon should technically activate here, but I'm going to shuffle his other classes, or send it, his other classes to the grave with Longirus' effect by shuffling in two banished machines, um, which he does actually end up banishing for his Colossus uh, a little later. He does pass his turn, and actually shoutouts to one of our uh, Twitch Shatters Dimension Warrior coming in clutch with helping us remember small niche things that we just overlook sometimes. Again, this is just a match for testing, so it's not like 100%, uh, you know, important that everything is played out 100% correct. Obviously, just learning from mistakes is really important as well, so I think that's one of these uh, good reasons to review these VODs sometimes in a video like this. Uh, so, Foolish Burial sends the Bombard, and I uh, actually drew that off the, uh, the uh, orchestrated return, which I was actually just able to set up so easily with the Bomber Dragon play and uh, Galtea, and then the Umber Mirage searching me the uh, world wand when it was summoned just such a really nice uh setup with umber mirage and i think he remembers here to banish uh a thunder dragon for his colossus here in just a moment um of course uh whatever thunder dragon he ends up banishing wouldn't get his effect because it technically would have been banished during his last turn when their effects would have already been exhausted so um yeah he goes ahead and banishes a copy of uh i believe uh, the duo he banishes. Um, so yeah, so he banishes the duo to protect his classes. Again, that would have happened last turn. I apologize for that little mishap there. Uh, so I, sum I, I started off the turn after Foolish Barreling, the, uh, the Brass Bombard, um, to go for a Danger Jackalope. He's going to discard the Orcus Nightmare, uh, and I will draw one card off Jackalope. Um, literally, I've always said it for dangers, like, it, it almost doesn't matter what dangers you play in the deck so long as, like, you know, your Orcus monsters are getting discarded out of your hand. Obviously, I think Mothman is a, it's an, an incredible card to pick up for the deck because it's so cheap, but, like, it's one of those cards, like, if they do pick it out of your hand, you still have the opportunity to get something into your grave. So, at least, if you are, uh, on a budget and you don't want to pick up Suchinokos and Nessies like me, or even Jackalopes, luckily I was able to pick them up before they got super expensive. I think I paid $30 for my playset, so, um, kind of lucky there. Uh, Scrap Recycler coming down now to, uh, go ahead and send one. I believe I sent the Harp Horror. Uh, I did play this a bit incorrectly here. I probably should have sent Symbol Skeleton a bit earlier on, so when I link for this play here i would have had the long gear suit engraved to follow up with the you know the symbol skeleton play and again forgetting that the jackalope and the colossus should be uh being attempted to be destroyed at this point which does happen momentarily uh but i get a bit ahead of myself and going for harp horror to summon out another copy of nightmare um because i was trying to set up some sort of play for like savage dragon but savage dragon with bomber dragon obviously do not uh you know mesh well as my bomber dragon will just blow up once it hits the field because that is a uh 
you know, uh, or Savage Dragon cannot uh, not be destroyed by card effects, so that's one thing you do have to take uh, into account. Now, I uh, Bomber Dragon does sort of set the pace for the game, especially if you're playing uh, Orcus as well. And especially since I don't have my battle phase this turn, um, you know, I, I, I'm, the pace is slowed a little bit because uh, I can't summon anything to that other zone uh, without like putting any other extenders on board, you know, while trying to do so because I will just lose them. Um, yeah, so you see my, my Jackalope will get destroyed there as it should have been and then he's banishing the uh, Beastial Thunder Dragon for the effect of Colossus to save it and then Beastial is going to summon out the Avian and then I'm going to use Symbol Skeleton here to summon out the uh, Longirsu, which I believe I summon it to a different zone. I believe I summon it to the zone again where Bomber Dragon points to, um, which I should have honestly just left it uh, in that other zone. I didn't really need to do to blow up his field again, because um, if I would have left the Longirsu in that other zone, uh, anything he would have summoned into his, you know. Uh, extra monster zone would have been, you know, susceptible not only to Longirsu, but to Orcustrion, since Orcustrion at this position doesn't point to his extra monster zone. Um, he does save Colossus again, and Avian is sent, and he shuffles all three copies of the regular Thunder Dragon back into his deck, and, uh, because he had all of those, he was opening those cards all night, like, literally the normal Thunder Dragon opening those, like, in twos or threes, even all night in his deck. It was just such bad luck for him, I felt bad. Um, but, uh, you know, it is what it is sometimes with Yu-Gi-Oh. And uh, his build is playing uh, not all the best dangers because he himself, uh, like me, can't really afford to pick some of those up right now. Uh, I think his danger lineup is 3 Jackalope, 3 Mothman, uh, 2 Ogopogo, 1 Thunderbird, 1 Chupacabra, and 1 Suchinoko is basically his danger lineup uh, for his build here. Summoning Battery Man Solar. And... Uh, Tempting uses his effect here to send a Thunder from deck to Grave to set up some sort of play with. Um, I do apologize for that glare. This is uh, this is going to be where the duels are going to be recorded in the future with this new camera that I was able to pick up. Um, but I have a, a better lighting system. Uh, hopefully going to be setting that up soon. So glares like that aren't such a big deal. Discarding Thunder Dragon to add the two copies of Thunder Dragon. Uh, and basically... Uh, having those same cards that he shuffled back moments ago back into his hand just like that but like i said earlier this is where again having the uh uh the long gear suit in that other zone would have been a much more advantageous because the anything that he summoned to his extra monster zone would have been susceptible to the orchestrion play and he did actually end up sending the bestial thunder dragon uh off of the battery man solar since he did just banish that for the wyvern burster and then bestial summons out thunder dragon dark here I end up chaining the effect of Orchestrated Nightmare to Foolish Symbol Skeleton, since I don't believe I have one engraved. Um, but at this point, I'm going to use Longirsu at will here uh, to go ahead and attempt to shuffle back the Colossus, because I do not want him to try to go into, um, like, a uh, Saryuja that easily. Um, and if he does, and actually, actually on the summon of this token, um, I also activate the effect of uh, Symbol Skeleton uh, to summon the Galatea to blow up his whole field because I don't want any Saryuja Sar Sar plays happening and I do not want him to be able to save his uh, Colossus again and possibly trigger another effect so that's why I did all those effects in that order and uh, I go to use Galatea's effect but uh, I have no other Orca spells or traps in my deck because I'm only playing one Babel and two Return. I might pick up a third Return in the future, um, just because it's such a nice card. But the other thing is, though, like, late game, like, when you're such a, like, a really good, advantageous spot, I think it's just because I overextend a lot, um, which is, again, just my fault and, you know, how I play the deck. Um, it's just finding other, like, plays to make that help, you know, really push for game later on. Which again, it could just be cards like Boral Sword. I didn't need to keep the Bomber Dragon, but I did because I lost my battle phase that turn because of the Umber Mirage, but it did help me put myself ahead. Um, again, I don't know if I'm going to play Umber Mirage anymore going forward. I might play it in more copies, maybe two copies of it, to try to see it earlier on, since there is no way to search the card like there is in Mermails, obviously. Um, you know, it's a Sea Serpent, you can add it off Dragoons, but... 
This is, uh, that was the rest of his hand. He was, uh, again, this is a Gar Dragon build, too. It's like a Chaos Thunder Dragon Gar Dragon build. Um, so he does have tons of other engine pieces to work with there. Hence why you saw the, uh, you know, the baby dragons in his hand. The one, uh, Crusadia Draco in his hand as well. Um, but that's going to be it for game one. I take that game one pretty commanding. Uh, being able to go first instead of that Long Gear Suit Bomber, which is just so, so strong. And uh, going forward, being able to end Long Gear Suit Bomber with the Orchestrated Climax, uh, the Searchable Counter Trap, like, it's just going to be so, so nice to have going forward. Um, so yeah, he gets his turn started with the Jackalope, and I have the, the, the luckiest roll ever to snipe the Jackalope out of his hand to summon out Danger Thunderbird. Now, Danger Thunderbird ideally would be a card like, um, well, this doesn't really matter what Danger Monster would be that he summons out Jackalope so long as it is a level 8, because that does play into his uh, rank 8 scheme that he does uh, and is able to set up most of the time to go into cards like Zombie Stein uh, or, you know, Hope Harbinger, things of that nature really strong play so he goes ahead and normal summons the phantom sky blast here to go ahead and summon out two tokens and uh trying to set up some sort of uh link plays here maybe some sort of star usual play but as you can see only has three monsters with different names at this point but he decides to link the two tokens right now into a wee witch and uh, I think he has like forced to go into a scuff Saryuja here because he just did not open up as optimal as he did last game. His if he would have went first last game, I probably wouldn't have been able to break his field. Maybe because uh, usually his build ends on consistent like three negations, um, like hot red with uh, you know the uh, Colossus and a, and a Thunder uh, or a Zombie Master or any other rank eight. You'll see him go right into the LP going to search one of the baby dragons from his deck and uh the eclipse wyvern in effect to banish the chaos dragon levioneer so like his build also plays into the levioneer and the diabolos plays uh, you know being able to loop your opponent for at least two cards during their turn mainly because obviously you know you need the fact of diabolos to put one either back to the top or bottom and then levioneer shuffles one random one back into the deck so the deck does have a potential like hand loop combo it can pull off on top of negations which is really really strong so he goes ahead and summons the duo which he technically cannot summon uh, which doesn't change uh, the play too much here he's still able to technically summon the Leviathan as you see he goes and puts the uh, duo back because he can only special summon dragon monsters while that LP is on the field and again I apologize for that glare so the uh, Leviathan still ends up getting banished of course by the effect of the uh, the, the Eclipse Wyvern, and then he's forced to go into Agar Pain here. An Agar Pain uh, effect will activate here shortly. The Spanish Agar Pain that he has, um, very very nice looking card in Spanish. Um, and then is going to, I think he follows up here. Yeah, just going into the Hot Red Abyss actually. And then he has to make a play here that kind of sucks to see, but it just happens um, because that's just how it is sometimes. I don't know what he was trying to accomplish here, uh, but links away into another scuffed Saryuja with only three different monsters. Of course, still meets the Link 4 requirement, uh, but going for the Thunder Dragon duo now, since he can, just trying to clear some of those Guard Dragon cards off of his field. Unfortunately, he did have to link away the Hot Red Abyss in the meantime. Summoning out Chaos Dragon Leviathan now banishing an LP, uh, or the Agar Pain, a Thunderbird, and one other monster. Three darks to use the effect to shovel one random card back. And uh, I'm not sure what card it ended up being. I can't remember. Uh, although I don't think it was too important. Now going into another, or going into his first rank eight, which is the Zombie Stein, which basically negates a face up card or a face up monster on the field by detaching, changing the defense, and discarding a card from his hand. So, but it does have 4,800 attack right now because of the Saryuja. It normally comes out of 45, but it's gaining the extra 300. So I reveal Jackalope to start my turn. Jackalope gets special. He discards Mothman. So I draw one off Jackalope, then I draw one off Mothman, and then discard for the Mothman. He's going to discard Ogapogo to basically deck then a card. Just going to dump a Mothman to the graveyard to hopefully probably see something a little bit better during his next turn. Scrap Recycler coming down. Uh, I still love Scrap Recycler. I don't know if I'll play it going forward. Um, like, because basically my main three, like, 
My main best normal summon summonable starter cards are Scrap Recycler, Four Mud Skipper, the one of Armageddon, and Graffer. I'm still playing all those. Um, I might cut down on the uh, Scrap Recycler to two, um, or Four Mud down to two. I'm not sure. I might just keep them both at three because seeing them in the opening hand is pretty great. Um, I go ahead and Dogman here, and uh, Dogman goes through. Again, I shouldn't have played the Dogman where it is. Because uh, I keep forgetting I need those two exact zones where the uh, Dogman and the Scrap Recycler are open uh, for, you know, the classic play with Summon Sorceress. Which, uh, going second, I, I need to rework my strategy because I, try, I tend to go for the same uh, plays I would as going first when I go second. Grabbing the Field Spell here again, trying not to forget that. But right now, I should technically just be able to, you know, link into a card like Boral Sword. Um, but I'm trying to bait out the zombie sign negation because if the zombie sign negation comes through uh, on my Boral Sword, I'm going to be in a kind of a bad spot because my OTK will be essentially stopped short, uh, which I do not want. But luckily, when the zombie uh, sign turned himself to defense for his own effect, he only has 1,300 defense because uh, it just has really low defense. It only has 1,000, but it's getting, being boosted by the Saryuja. And Sar or Summon Sorceress comes out now. And uh, I wasn't going to take back uh, this play this time of moving the card out of the zone. Uh, you know, I needed it to be in, or, well, need, moving it to a zone that it would have been better in. But instead, I just sort of uh, accept this sort of misplay and summon another Dogman from deck. Another Beast Warrior, if you will. Uh, because these actually level 7s come in quite handy later on. Um, I could make a rank 7 at this point. I could make a card like Draco Sack or... Um, big eye and try to maybe steal one of his monsters that bait out a negation really well um, it's just uh, some possibilities here using the Orcus nightmare from graveyard now to banish it targeting the summon sources I'm thinking I'm sending world one but uh, it's boosted by 800 but I don't think I end up doing that because um, I think I need um, a bombard and grave uh, perhaps actually no, I don't need a bombarding grave. I, that's what the harp horror is for so I actually do end up foolishing the world wand there to boost the uh, summon sorcerers by 800 putting up to uh, would be 3200 being up from six. Yeah, th yeah, be at 3200 so it could beat over Saryuja technically at, at this point now using a simple skeleton to uh, Summon out Galatea linking the Galatea and the dog man away for Longirisu and uh, I attempt to use Longirisu's effect here this is where I try to bait out the negation of the Zombie Master, because Long uh, Longirisu sends any linked monster that your opponent controls uh, to the grave. So he negates, discards, and turns it to defense. It doesn't destroy. That's why I just don't like cards like Hot Red Abyss and Zombie Sign, because they don't destroy the cards they negate. Savage Dragon is sort of similar, um, but like that's why I think Crystal Wing is still such a strong card to summon off a card like Agarpain. So I link into the Orchestrion here, and then using the Harp Horror to summon out the uh, the Brass Bombard to Synchro into the 21 Savage Dragon uh, to go ahead and grab that Summon Sorcerer from Grave with it and give it three counters, boosting it up by 1,200 attack, putting it up to 42. Uh, and again, that Zombie Sign has a pretty measly defense, only 1,300 defense points. Uh, did have 4,800 attack, though. That's pretty... Um, it's pretty something you like something to be reckoned with, I should say. Uh, it can come out and deal like tons of damage. I didn't know that card had that much attack, um, and it's one of the older Ixies too. I didn't really uh, realize uh, many decks were playing it. I don't know if many decks do. It might just be a personal attack of his because um, he's always coming up with some some spice to play in the extra. Uh, and here I'm debating whether or not I want to use the uh, the World Wand in my grave just to summon out uh, another monster for Harp Horror. I don't need to do this. I just I just love to overextend with this deck, which is something I need to not do in the future. Um, although having like Harp Horror on, you know, on field isn't super bad. I mean, I, I should technically be trying to get stuff in my graveyard for next turn if he's able to bounce back. I do have a Brass from Bard and Grave, but I don't think I have any Orcus in the hand. Um, and then he draws for turn and draws Thunder Dragon, the normal Thunder Dragon, and I can just go ahead and negate that, of course, obviously, just to, uh, you know, Prove that that is game right there. So Orcus taking the match 2-0. Uh, I got pretty lucky winning that dice roll going first. Um, probably could have ended with you know a hot red, uh, you know zombie Stein, Colossus, 
uh, you know, ending just on a really solid field of three negations or two negations, I should say, and then um, the uh, the no searching effect from Colossus, which really doesn't hurt, uh, you know, Orcus too much because you would think that it might stop Galatea, but Galatea does not add from deck to hand; it only just plays from deck to field. So. A pretty decent matchup there against this deck to be honest against thunder dragon in general i would say because you're really not doing a whole lot of searching other than a card like uh off of um what is it the reinforcement of the army um you know your draw spells are drawing so that doesn't you know get stopped by colossus and stop your dangers uh it's a pretty nice matchup i would say you know in orca's favor for the most part it's just i really want to win that dice roll if things uh really want to you know look up for me in that matchup so hope you guys enjoyed if you did uh leave a like let me know what you think down in the comment section below um i'm gonna skim through the rest of this stream to see if there's any other matchups i can pull uh before i'm able to you know uh you know get a chance to sit down and record some real duels uh and not to be uh you know doing them from streaming um, but also I have some good news. I'm going to be able to record some feature matches as well for my locals very, very soon. Um, because I got the, the, the go ahead, the okay from one of the, uh, one of my friends that works there. So that's all fine and dandy here. If you guys are excited for that feature matches, making a return tons of variety coming. Hopefully I'll still be uh, trying to make appearance in those feature matches as well at locals. So anyway, so if you guys enjoyed, don't forget to check out Imperium Duelist, join discord, follow me on Twitch. If you want to see me test, uh, decks like these live or see us uh play irl live you know play irl duels um you know live duels things of that nature but yeah anyways hope you guys enjoyed thanks for watching as always when it comes out we'll see you in the next one